Okay, next topic, um, handling uh, page faults from kernel tracers. Um, so uh, we, we had a patch set that we've uh, done a, a couple of revisions and I've uh, been uh, lucky to have uh, the, uh, the eyes of uh, Linus Torvalds looking at my code and telling me it was wrong. So I changed my approach uh, we, and, and I think it was actually really a good improvement. So uh, I'm going to show a little bit the context there. So the use cases we target. So we want to allow kernel tracers to read data from user space memory. So and the main case would be syscall entry and exit trace points. So we, especially on syscall entry, we want to know what's the input data. So we open a file, we want to grab the, the path name that was specified in user, user space. That makes the, the, the overall trace really kind of usable from an end user perspective. So, you, so there, there you really get a S-trace-alike syscall tracer. And I, basically what I want to do is a S-trace-alike syscall tracer in the kernel uh, with LTTNG, so, which, which it currently does. But it has some limitation because it cannot take page faults. Another use case would be user events. User events could receive pointer to uh, user space data, so having a way to uh, basically take uh, page faults there uh, is important. However, user events is kind of specialized. It could take its own page fault beforehand. So that maybe not, maybe that one is not so important, but taking stack traces from syscall entry and exit is also another use case where you, I mean, this allows you to really correlate what is the causality link between application backtrace and the syscall. So let's say you find syscalls that are misused or called too often, then you want to find the offending user space code that calls those syscalls, then with those backtraces, you just uh, find the offending spot. Uh, I'll also add, well, especially since lately, you know, you, me, and Josh have been working on S-frames, so we were going to be getting um, really good um, stack walk uh, tracers. By the way, just FYI, we're just at the GNU Caldrum since we are early. We, I could jump in here. Um, we're at the GNU Caldrum, and uh, Florian, Florian was the yep. LibC maintainer is on board with S frames. So he's going to rebuild LibC with S frames. Josh has a prototype out there already for the kernel to have it. What's S frames? It's a way to do uh, accurate user space stack walks without frame pointers. So we could, in Fedora, we could turn off those frame pointers stuff, build everything with S frames, and the kernel will be able to walk the stack of, um, of user space. So we could do it in the kernel very easily. And one thing about the faultable thing, it requires a faultable context. S frames are mapped in user space, so the kernel has to um, find the information of how to walk the stack trace from, like, uh, from the kernel to reading user space addresses, which will fault quite a bit. So by having the uh, faultable system calls, we'd be able to do that immediately. One other thing you could do with this, and I don't know if you put, mentioned this in your thing, is filtering. Now you could yep. filter yep. if you wanted to your trace, like say I only care about these sys calls from this user space function. So when you hit the kernel, the kernel does a stack trace, the filter could say, ah, this has my function I care about, trace, otherwise throw it away. So there's exactly. lots, yep. lots of things you can do with this. Just, I just want to throw that out there. Yep. Thank you. Uh, yes, use case, action to perform. So, <laughs> I was coming to it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, kernel tracers, ftrace, perf, ebpf, lttng can use this data for copying it into a ring buffer, that's a clear, uh, perform online filtering based on input, exactly what Steve mentioned, especially on syscall entry, for instance, that would be really useful. It can be either on the syscall parameter, user space content, or on the stack trace. So, uh, yeah. Uh, indexing counters within maps, uh, so uh, LTTNG uh, next version will support uh, uh, event counter maps. Uh, for future versions, we also would like to do, uh, well, allow the uh, to, to figure, uh, specify how much to increment the counters by, so you could use user space data to, to choose how much you want to uh, increment by. Uh, and emitting triggers, uh, trigger notifications to capture specific fields. So uh, to have a kind of a more uh, uh, lower latency response to what is happening. So for lower uh, rate events uh, that can bypass uh, the ring buffer. 
<clears throat> so uh, yeah, just a few words about the current limitations. So there are some scenarios that lead to always unavailable data. Uh, for instance, if you exec VE a program and then you immediately do a open at and where you have the path name in your program data, that's not paged in. So you're taking a fault. So the tracers know nothing about that path name. So that's a problematic scenario right there. Uh, basically, any data that is not faulted in uh, from the program or library is an issue. Uh, and also, I mean, the stack walk is a good example where if you have a pressure on your memory or, uh, yeah, I, I guess that would require pressure, right, to remove the, the pages that are at the stack uh, bottom? Uh, well, actually, it's not my thing right now is the S, if you're going to go to S-frames. Oh, the S-frame per se, yes. The S-frames yes. themselves are going to be faulted the, in. The, yeah, that's it. So just to grab this S-frame section content that describes basically how to unwind a frame to the next uh, function, just to read this information, it's not paged in, it's just mapped. So you need to take those page faults as you traverse. Yes, I didn't think about it. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> uh, so my proposal is to allow syscall trace points to handle page faults. So the kernel trace points, they currently disable preemption around to iterate on all the registered tracer callbacks. So I want to modify the syscall trace point to use task trace RCU, which has been created for that very purpose, actually, by Paul McKinney, uh, for use by eBPF. But then we could use it by, for other uh, means. Um, and it would allow the, trace, the, the callbacks to take page faults. So I have uh, the latest version of the patch series uh, sent. Uh, and yeah, so it's open for feedback. Uh, let's see if. Uh, how to, oh, there's still content. Okay, good, I'm not done. Uh, so how tracer can handle page fault. Uh, so, okay, so those are some ideas on how the tracers could uh, integrate with this because this patch series really just makes it possible for tracers to take page faults. But, and I adapt the, the tracer probe code so that if they depend on having preemption disabled, they disable it internally within the probe. So uh, basically what it allows, uh, approaches the tracers can take to handle faults. So they can either decide to fault in all user pages in a preparation step before entering their preempt of uh, critical section. That's one possibility. Uh, it's not 100% perfect. I mean, if you have extremely, insanely high pressure, they could be uh, paged out, uh, swapped out, but I would find it unlikely. So for practic practical purposes, that should be good and easy to do. Uh, they could decide to copy all user space data to a kernel area um, uh, before copying that to the ring buffer with preempt off. That's another approach. Or they could uh, modify their uh, ring buffer to allow access with preemption uh, enabled. So LTTNG uh, modules has been created with a, ring, uh, uh, with a ring buffer that is also implemented in user space. So with a, a few tunable, I can make it uh, uh, work uh, with preemption on. So uh, it, it's, it's uh, but I cannot say the same for other uh, tracers. They are not designed to do that. It would be a, a relatively larger change. By the way, uh, so um, there were some sessions about SecComp uh, earlier this week, uh, and this has been mentioned actually. So the, the difference there is for SecComp, the, the case where they would like to copy user space inputs into a, a in kernel copy. The only difference there is the need to modify the syscall implementations so that whenever that copy is available, it go fetch from that copy rather than fetching from user space. Because for security purposes, they do not want to have a time of check, time of use race. So that's the difference. For tracing, we don't care that much. I mean, if it happens, oh, well. Uh, so it's not being used as an attack vector uh, as a for seccomp. So uh, if we do the approach where we copy user space data to a kernel area, I think we should synchronize with the SecCom people because that could be common infrastructure if we ever go there. That's what I have. Uh, if you guys have uh, questions, comments. I mean, we only have um, 19 minutes left. I was that fast? Well, you finished your first one early. Oh, okay. That's, that's <laughs> In fact, you're halfway through by the time you finished, got to the time of your first one. So now you have the time to review my patch set. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Why don't you pull them up? <laughs> you have it's to not leak. my laptop. <laughs> well, well, yeah, you can put up. Well, you know, you you posted them. You can you go open up, share a window. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, uh, I'm way behind everything, and, and it's multiple things. Uh, whoops, there, there you go. So you mentioned uh, using this for syscall trace points. At one point, you also said ftrace, I think. I might have missed it. Yeah, but the oh. syscall, so ftrace can work to syscalls in two different ways. So one way is the raw syscall, and the other way is kind of working on the syscalls with something that is aware of yeah, each so of those. What I'm trying to, what, all I'm trying to ask is, is this just going to be for explicit trace points or for other things? Oh. Because if we attach this to ftrace and so on, it would be possible to get recursion through, you trace something within the fault handling path, you get into that. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's only for the sys entry and sys exit trace points. No, this only is that. this is a uh, uh, add only. Like it's not going to be just hey, any just hooked anything else. Like you know the RCU idle. It's like well, actually we do have like trace points that we have to mark. Remember the old RCU idle which you got rid of uh, with the instr uh, no instrument stuff going on. But the um, uh, yes. So right now I think the only Multiple ones are just a syscall. I think it's just the raw syscall, right? We're not, because I think the other one, because it attaches to. No, the two. So, oh, so well, they both the, the syscall, uh, sysentry and sysexit trace points are modified, so they become a, uh, I don't recall, but kind of declare uh, or, or trace event syscall or trace yeah. syscall event. So they be become a different kind of thing. Yeah. And then the register function for the probe has a different name. It has an extra syscall in there. So you, right. you only register. A syscall probes to syscall events, and that's it. So, yeah. but those are the only case we foresee. Uh, yeah, it's funny. Just um, FYI, all the uh, uh, all the uh, all the system call trace. Like when you look into the trace of S directory and you see all the syscalls there, those system calls are actually pseudo system calls. Or so, I mean, those events are all actually pseudo or pseudo events. There's only uh, in the in Linux. There's only an entry on an entry of, uh, yep, and one on the exit, and then we build up on top of that. And now we're ftrace because ftrace the ring buffer. We usually do the reserve the ring buffer, and then we end it. For these faultable syscall or faultable, if you say I want the the stack or for so, or anything that asks for that, uh, right now in the filtering logic, a while back ago I found out that if you um, reserve space on the ring buffer, and then that's really fast. What ftrace really sucks at is saying, I want to discard that event. So if, if that's actually a very slow, takes several atomic operations to do it. So if you're doing filtering and you're throwing away 90% of your events, I found out that the, that the performance of throwing away all your events after writing to the ring buffer was so effing slow, I found out it was actually quicker to create a temp buffer, copy into that, and if you and just threw it away if you didn't do that. And so the copy was much quicker than trying to do this other thing. Now, with this, I'd have to just oh, say a faultable. We just say use the, um, the copy. The copy. Uh, it'll be per well, So I don't know. That we'd have to do a migrate disable. That's the only thing. We have to do a migrate disable or something. Or we have to do something where. Or decide or, to put the copy uh, associated with the task rather than CPU. I mean, we, yeah, we'd have yeah, to yeah, figure that's, that that's out. Yeah, that's implementation detail. But yeah, that's something we do. All right. So. I guess you ran the, the session early, so, so I didn't. I missed most of that. However, I spotted this um, your talk essentially last evening and thought it might be relevant for something that I had an issue with like 15 years ago, and it seems like a, it might be a good fit. I mean, uh, does this framework and I yet have to see, have a look at your patch set, obviously. Does this framework provide for something like? being able to fault in pages uh, when uh, you know running a session uh, attached to the kernel via G JTAG debugger, essentially. That's, that's something that we did on well, x86 even. We had JTAG probes back then using the Intel item uh, architecture. And there was this idea that we could actually sort of like, if you load the symbol table into your debugger, then you can even examine your like, user programs. However, the issue is, well, well while the, you know, at, at least on x86, you can actually walk uh, you know, the, the page tables using just by fetching the, the CPU registers. However, if, 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 if a page has been swapped out, then obviously you can't reach that. And this looks like you know, something that would be extremely useful for that. So, so 
Yeah, but I mean, if you're, uh, just to make sure I understand. So you're talking about a context where the observer is a JTAG external interface. Yeah, essentially GDB attached to, to, yes. to the Linux kernel. I mean, if you have stopped the thread, I mean, it cannot go and do what well, is needed you, to you another can. page fault. Right? I, mean, I mean, you can, because the, it can be, you know, either, well, we actually worked on the sort of intermediate firm, uh, you know, uh, prop firmware. So it could even work beneath GDB, essentially. It could yeah. execute whatever it wanted. Yep. So we had some, some, some uh, automation in that uh, if there was like a particular symbol uh, exported from via well, debug information, obviously, from, from the kernel executable, you could like the, the you know, pro firmware could actually sort of like issue a call instruction to, to run that code. Yeah. So if, if, if there's like an entry point in the kernel that you can yeah. invoke like but this way to, to get the, the, the page faulted in, that it seems to me like something that could work actually. That's actually relatively similar to what I uh, noticed. Uh, so uh, the other talk I just did before was about the side EBI for user space instrumentation. And I have uh, uh, in mind to uh, uh, have hooks there so that GDB can attach to that uh, static instrumentation. So that seems to be another instance in a different context of the same thing. So you'd like to have some kind of symbol emitted by those trace points that uh, identify a location where an external debugger could connect and then do what, whatever it wants without having to register a probe or things like that. It just wants to hook on a symbol. So that could be done. There's a use case for that. Right, thank you. So I'm wondering with this faultable trace points, if this would help S-Trace, if they could be able to do anything to hook, we have the S-Trace maintainer right here, so. Uh, <laughs> I just like, put a spotlight on you. Um, we, we had that discussion about using perf or something and I, it never went through. I forgot, we had, uh, I talked to Linus about it and this was like years ago and I for, he gave me a solution, I forgot what it was and I was embarrassed to ask him again, so. <laughs> but yeah, because the idea is like if, you know, the, a lot of people say that S trace is slow, but if we are able to have like S trace um, enable stuff, and actually, it w it could just say okay, enable perf or whatever, and it could do the memory maps or even F trace. F trace now it does memory maps too, and just read um, the trace and then have a way of saying if the reader can't keep up, it will stop the process. So basically, instead of stopping the process, uh, right now I, I believe you know F trace uses or S trace uses P trace which is a horrible interface. And um, it's also quite slow. Oh, got a point there. So, okay, so I have that kind of scheme in user space. Optionally, the user can specify when the buffer is full, block, or block for that much yeah. time at most. So with faultable trace points, we could port that concept to the kernel. Because if you're within the faultable trace points, you could block. Yes. Yeah, if you, and you could say you're allowed to block if you have P-Trace, like basically P-Trace can block any task it can, I mean, yes. if you have P-Trace ability, then we could say we no, can block. Wait, but wait, we have, there wait. is a constraint what? there, because what? you are in a task trace RCU read side, and the contract there is all the users need to play fair and only fault, a block for faults, well, no, no, not but, for other but reasons. But what we could do is if we have an issue where like, oh, we're like not doing this, we could actually, if we say, oh, we want a block, you just release everything, and when you come back, you start from the beginning again, knowing that, you are, that you've blocked, and then you basically, you already got, like you said, you got the information. If it's not there, you throw away the event, and then recreate the event the next time. Yeah, uh, that will require more discussion, I think. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, we got another uh, <laughs> eight minutes. <laughs> But so, no, yeah. What, what I'm wondering is, is there a way, so let's say we're a tracer, we notice that our ring buffer is full. Could we postpone that to later so that uh, we are not in the um, execution context uh, with the uh, task tracer CU taken anymore, and we kind of postpone writing information into the ring buffer to later? That could be return to user space or whatnot. So then we can exit the task tracer CU tr critical section and have some way to block the application at that point. Well, I'm saying, okay, where is the RCU taken? 
uh, I mean, sorry, where, where, like, in this? At the SysN tree, SysCenter, SysExit trace points, which right. are part of but common this, slash right. entry.c. Uh, that's the generic C code that gets invoked when syscall tracing is enabled. So I'm saying if you set a flag like a task work flag, or I mean, though actually that would return back. We don't want, we want to actually stop yes. the task. So but I, you could stop it in the work uh, header, right? In the well, task work. Okay, no, block I'm the saying it's because you got to schedule it out. I mean, you got to, you don't want to go further. You don't even want to do the system call. You don't, you don't even want, so you can't, no, you don't want to do the system call. Ideally not, not yes. Right, because you are going to lose all the information. You're, you come in, you realize the ring buffer's full, so it means you can't write anything new. So at that point, you have to block, you don't want to even continue further. So you, but you could release, every, you could release, go, like set a flag or a return call or something, so the faultable entry code releases everything. And then, puts you on a queue or something like that, or the ptrace queue and say, uh, you're blocked right here as the end, at the entry level here. And then the ptrace, when the, uh, the or so ptrace, or whoever's recording notifies it or could then release it, gets a signal or I don't know, we, we can figure yeah, out the implementation. Yeah, some details. notification, yep. Some notification or whatever, and or we could just hook it to the uh, ring buffer thing. So when the ring buffer is, has, uh, you know, oh, we have space available, it wakes it up. I mean, we, we kind of need something that is, well, the ring buffer detects there's no more, no more space. It needs to inform the current thread that as soon as possible, it needs to be blocked uh, and, and associate that with a kind of wake up signal that well, can be sent. From like I said, whatever, outside. like when you call, Jose, so basically the, um, oh wait, shoot, you're right. So we're still in, so the faultable trace point we might have to have something where it says, um, we're go like release and go to sleep. Yeah, because because we cannot do general blocking in right. a faultable. Right. So, uh, trace but you still have a different. macro around it, right? Isn't it? You still have um, the trace points. Still have. I mean, the trace point for. Okay, I haven't looked at. The, like I said, I haven't had a chance to look at the code yet. So my feel is, are you using uh, uh, SRRCU or no? It's a task trace RCU. So oh, basically, task trace yeah. So if we block for too long, we're preventing yeah. reclaim of no. all those. Right, 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 right. So yeah. no, so I'm saying so. But what my point was, somewhere you call the task trace RCU lock. Yes, yes. Around a trace point and the callback iteration, right? Yes, yeah. right. But that's in a macro or whatever. Yeah, right? in yeah. the do a double underscore do yeah. trace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm saying in that code yep. that we have it there, this is for the faultable trace and what is faultable trace point. We could have a return value or, or some sort of global or not global like task bit or you know whatever that we could set that we would come out of it and said oh we, now we need to block yeah we need to block yeah and repeat so basically you come all the way out and you hit it you will block but you may not want to repeat for all registered tracers the other ones no 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 this no no it's 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 a per task bit yes but. Per task is not enough. You need it per task oh, because, per registered well, no, tracer. Well, no, you're going to block for every trace. Well, it's because if you're going to block for one, you're blocking for all of them. But you may have already written the event in some tracers. The third one says, I want to block. So oh. you, do you call again the first two? Well, actually, I mean, you have the bits. So basically, you could have some sort of like CPU mask or what, not CPU, or like how many tracers if you have a bit mask of all the, like, you know, you have yeah. a bit mask. But I feel like this is like a continuation. The tracer that wants to block says, after you've blocked, please call me back. Right. Rather than just re restarting. No, no, what I'm saying right? is, yeah. what I'm saying is you have a bit mask that represents all the, like your array, you know, you have your RCU array that you say, mm -hmm. you just go down the array of call this yep. tracer, call this tracer, call this tracer, yep. have a bit mask of that. When whoever says, I want to block, you set that bit, set that bit. But that's per task. So you want to add a bit mask per task? I mean, the array oh, no. is, is Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, the, so the task would have, I mean, how big is the, right? I mean, this, how many tracers do you attach right now? There, there are no limits currently. There's no limits that's currently, but we could just have this thing be like default to 64. But we'll see. I, I feel like this continuation might work better. I mean, if you just have a way to say, please block and call me back with this well, callback in private data when you're done. Yeah, I mean, that, so basically it would be up the tracer and say, just store this in a private, like, no, have some sort of temporary buffer for the no, task. No, no, you have a linked list of things to do after. No, 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 I'm saying the tracer okay. itself, that's my block, because it could say, it could say, oh, I don't have buffer available, have a temporary uh, place to put the event information, and then do then when you get no, called back. No, it would be called immediately after having unblocked, after, 
still within the syscall entry code. So oh, you're oh, still oh, at I the see. right point. Oh, basically, instead of just coming back into the loop, you just say... Yeah, do just this specifically. Call me back with this pointer after you've blocked. And block for... So, and if, so if you have five of them, you have to have a list of these. Yeah, exactly. You got it. And you have to do that per task. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Are we done? Well, almost. Well, anyone else? Oh, one question. When I... Didn't really follow. There was one thing I, I missed at some point. But you said, "Wait, the contract in task trace RCO is there. You can block, but only to fault." Yep. And 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 this was uh, uh, not allowing for the idea of Steven. How did you um, uh, circumvent this limitation? You seem to have it figured out, but I missed how. So the idea I have, and then we have to look at the details, right? We might be a bit uh, <laughs> wrong there. But the idea is a uh, uh, tracer notice, it would need to block because its ring buffer is full. So what it could do is basically NQ it, uh, a function that has a pointer to its own data to be called after unblocking. And then it would basically set something, a flag or something that tells the trace point code to block after having completed the iteration calling all the tracers. So basically then, we, when we complete iteration, release task trace RCU uh, uh, unlock, then we notice this flag, we block, we wait for something to wake us up, and then we look at the queue of things that were registered on the task. And you block after you release that trace, the RCU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, the, the requirement is we can't go back to user space. Yeah. Uh, we could block. We could. Well, we could. We could. When we say block, we could st stop, but we can't go. Like we don't. Yeah, we can't depend on user space to. Yeah, but move I. I would say that ideally we would like to block within the syscall entry yeah. code yes. because I mean you could have side effects within the syscall that end up modifying the input arguments you wanted to look at. So that's where you want to block. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just uh, just a comment. So that are, I will. Yeah. <laughs> Just comment. Um, I will uh, expand that are two, uh, T probes uh, to your to uh, say that are so that are uh, re derived that are uh, system call parameters or something like that. Good. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. All right. I think we're out of time. Thanks Thank a lot for all the feedback. Thank you. Thank you.